See, our parents are very strict about being American. You are America, you are born here, this is your country. You defend your country, even if you have to die for your country. By the end of 1939, much of the Eastern Hemisphere was engulfed in war. But for those in the United States, including Noboru Seki of Honolulu, Hawaii, life continued on as usual. Still, as the U.S. military proceeded to take precautionary measures against potential attacks, Noboru viewed this as an opportunity to escape the workforce. I was working as a laborer during that period. Hard, dirty work. I was glad to join the Army. <laughs> See, I was working for a Corps of Engineers along the North Shore, digging trenches and fortifications for machine gun nests, ready for defense. Late in 1941, Noboru's parents made the decision to move back to Japan, their country of origin. But for reasons he could not explain, Noboru decided not to go with them. December 4th, 1941. They decided to go back to Japan for good. Somehow, I didn't want to go with them, Japan. I want to stay locally. Boy, that was the greatest decision I ever made. If I went with them, I'd be, I'd be in their service. I'd be your enemy. But at the time, Noboru had no way of knowing just how greatly his decision to stay in the U.S. would affect the course of his life. And it all started just three days after he bid farewell to his parents. December, December 7th, 7, 1941. A date which will live in infamy. Japanese air squadrons had commenced bombing in the American island of Oahu Japan has therefore undertaken a surprise offensive extending throughout the Pacific area. Oh, devastating. We felt real bad because they attack us same race, you know. But if they attack, we'll fight, no matter who they are. But in spite of this sentiment ringing true for virtually all Japanese Americans, the United States government feared that their loyalty could not be depended upon as the U.S. went to war against Japan. In February of 1942, over 100,000 people of Japanese descent, most of them American citizens, were relocated to internment camps in the western United States. They were taken away, and they were sent to the mainland camp not, nothing wrong with them. You know, they're a good citizen. Yeah, it's a sad situation, you know. Having been spared relocation to the internment camps, Noboru continued his duties on the shores of Honolulu until January of 1943 when he was given the opportunity to join the 442nd Infantry Regiment, a unit comprised almost entirely of Japanese-American soldiers. They look for volunteers. I uh, joined right away. I didn't want to work, work no more, pick a shovel. <laughs> well, we went to Mississippi. They never saw us kind of people down there. So we had a problem. He says, you're not black. You're not white. But you go where the white men go. Don't you ever go to a black area. We went in spite. We didn't care. Uh, yeah, human beings, you know. In Hawaii, we got six, six seven different races. We get together fine. Hmm? In spite of segregation, racial inequality, and many people like himself detained in internment camps, 
Noboru was eager to prove his patriotism in battle overseas. I love my country, I'll defend my country, whatever. Took a ship all the way to North Africa, in, into Italy, Naples, Anzio, and north of Rome. Germans that shit. Boy, see, they had all the advantage. We're below, they're up in a hill. We had to advance all up the hill. The 88 is devastating. Fast firing. And the machine guns fast firing too. <laughs> Gotta demoralize it, you know. My lieutenant, the first time he got killed, poor thing. He had a good, good lieutenant. First night, he got shot in the head. But as the 442nd made their way north through Italy, they showed themselves again and again to be a relentless unit, tenacious in battle, and an honorable representation of their country. Not to run all the way to Florence. We got the Germans running. We're small but small but mighty. <laughs> we're, we're bond together, you know. We fight together. One guy engaged, we all join in. Go for broke. Never fear. Go all out, go for broke. Heading into western France in October of 1944, the 442nd was tasked with locating and rescuing an American battalion that was cut off and surrounded by the German army. Three other battalions had already attempted a rescue, each one hurled back by the German forces. Now it was the 442nd's turn to try. They were trapped. 200 men. The heavy pine forest, dark, rainy, slush, muddy, a miserable place. They, they told us to get them out. So I company on the left, K company on the right. I and K attack. They got those uh, Texas battalions saved. But they lost quite a few men there. The 442nd succeeded in rescuing over 200 soldiers of the lost battalion, but it came at a heavy price. More than 800 men were either wounded, captured, or killed in action. On where they went, on top of the ridge, all the way to the place called B. Fontaine. That night, uh, we were on a reconnaissance by six of us. We creep and crawl, looking for the enemy position. All of a sudden, machine gun fire, not knowing where the fire came from. I got caught by machine gun fire. Took my arm off. That was the end of my combat career. After saying goodbye to his brothers in the 442nd, Noboru was being sent back to the United States, where he would spend the rest of the war recovering in a military hospital. Over the course of the Second World War, the 442nd Infantry Regiment would become one of the most decorated units in U.S. military history, earning over 18,000 awards ranging from bronze stars to medals of honor. In spite of discrimination and racial inequality, they had gone above and beyond in proving their loyalty to their country, a country that in spite of its flaws, Noboru continues to hold dear to this day. We're treated like enemy, but after the war, they're treated, treated like local people. Because we fought good. 
they know we fought good. See, our parents are very strict about being American. You are America, you are born here, this is your country. You defend your country, even if you have to die for your country. My Gopher Broke Educational Center, we had a memorial there. Every Saturday, we had students come over. We explained about the war. I said, you are you are born in this country. No matter what happens, you have to defend your country. Go for broke. Hi everyone, I'm Josh from Memoirs of World War II and I just want to say thank you so much for watching this episode. Our goal is to capture as many World War II veteran stories as we can from all over the world, but we can't do it alone. If you'd like to help us in this mission, consider supporting us through Patreon and check out our website in the links below for more information. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss a single episode. We want to say thank you for your support and thanks for watching.